Hello again, this is Kyle, let's write code. Now most of the time we have control over all the changes that are happening to the elements in our DOM here, such as when things are added or edited or removed. But sometimes we don't, such as if you're using a library that you don't have control over, or when the DOM doesn't have a way to let you know when a certain type of change has occurred, such as like an element's width and height changes. So let's pretend I'm using a library here that will randomly insert a bear uh, into our list of bears here. And it will do so in any time between uh, 0 to uh, 1 second here. And I want to know which bear it adds after it adds the bear. So what I can do is I can go here and I can just simply try to query select it. So I can say bear document query selector and try to get that bear that it added. So I'll say the ul tag bears and we'll get the first one here. And then let's just console log out our bear. And when we refresh the page, you can see every single time it is null. That's because this is looking for that, that element instantaneously when the our library here can um, take up to a full second to add it. So we're always going to get null here. So the easy thing to do is just let's just throw a set timeout at it, right? So we'll say set timeout. And we're going to query this. Uh, um, let's, let's query it one second later. And now when we refresh the page, you see we get the element every single time. So that works, right? Looks good to me, let's ship it. But wait, for some reason now, um, the script takes longer than one second to load. It can take up to two seconds. And so now when we reload our script, you see sometimes we get the, uh, the correct element, but then sometimes, um, half the time we're gonna get null, or our whole thing is gonna be uh, broken. Hmm, okay, well that's not gonna work. Hmm, what else could we do? I know, let's try set interval instead. Uh, so we're gonna say set interval. And that's gonna give us the polar here. Okay, so what we wanna do instead is, uh, let's just, instead of tr trying once, we're gonna just gonna try every second to see if we find a bear. And if we find the bear, then we can just cancel this uh, set interval. That should work, right? So let's go here and clear interval our polar if we find the bear. So yeah, so every second we're just gonna go through and say, does this bear exist? And we can refresh our page. And now you can see every single time we successfully find the bear. Now this is called polling, and polling certainly has its use cases, but checking for changes of the DOM uh, isn't really one of those you should do. This way is very inefficient and very slow. As you can see, it takes a little bit longer after the element's inserted for it actually to show up. There has to be a better way. And what was this video called again? Oh, that's right, mutation observers. Let's try that. All right, so let's remove this polling nonsense and create ourselves a mutation observer. So say observer equals new mutation observer here. Next, we wanna tell it the element we want to observe. So we'll get that. So we'll say bears document query selector and we'll get our UL uh, bears. And then we'll say observer observe we want to observe this bears element. And we are gonna feed it, uh, the second parameter here, uh, a list of config options of what types of things we want it to observe. Now we want to observe when things are added or removed from our list here. So we're gonna say observe child list equals true. Now the next thing we need to do is go up here and give our mutation observer a callback to call when something has changed. When it's, when it's detected that something's changed, it's gonna call this callback and it's gonna give us all the mutations or all the mutation records and basically a list of everything that has occurred. And now more than one thing can happen at the same time, so that's why we have more, uh, that's why it gives us a, a list of mutations instead of one thing. So what we need to do is just go through these mutations and uh, handle each of the mutation records. So we'll just loop through it here. So the mutation record will have certain properties on it to let us know uh, what kind of mutation it was. And so we wanna know if one has been added. So we're gonna check this mutation record for the property added nodes and see if that has any, any nodes or any elements that have been added into our, um, our UL bears uh, element. And so if we found one, if, if, the, if there is added nodes, we're just gonna simply um, console log out the first one that we found, assuming that's the one that we want. So now when we go over here and run our code, Every time it adds the, uh, the, the li tag, you see it instantaneously knows 
uh, that it was added and it console logs it out with no lag. Um, and we don't have to sit there and continually pull the page, continually checking the DOM uh, to see if it's changed. It will just let us know when it adds it. As you can see, it doesn't matter how long the bears library takes to add a bear, uh, using a mutation observer, it just happens much faster and way more efficient than pulling. Now, maybe sometime later, uh, our API will not only add a bear, but it will also remove a bear, um, you know, two seconds f further in the future. And so we can detect that uh, the same way we, we detected the added nodes, we can just check for uh, the removed nodes. So let's say if the mutation contains uh, removed nodes length, then we know that it, um, it actually has removed something. So we'll say console log out, and we'll just say removed, and we'll get the mutation, uh, removed nodes, and we'll just grab the first one. And here we'll change this to added. And so now when we go and refresh the page, you can see that it logs added because it's added the polar bear, and then when it removes it, it logs that it removed the polar bear. So another good use case is sometimes you have a modal on your page, and the dimensions or the width and height of it can change depending on the window size or the position on the page or, you know, modals can get bananas. So we're going to include another library into the mix here that's going to turn our bears list into kind of like a modal here. And what it's going to do is every second, it's going to randomly change the width and height of it, uh, simulating, you know, a, a really wacky modal. So we're going to require that library here, um, sizer.js and refresh the page just to get a feel for what it's going to do. And as you can see, it's just going to every second randomly choose a new width and height. Uh, and so it is our job to try to center that modal on the screen, no matter what the width and height changes to. And so we need to know when the width and height changes. So to do that, what we want to observe here is, uh, as you notice, we have this attribute style that changes every second. So we want to observe the attributes. So we're going to go here and instead of uh, listening to whether or not uh, nodes are added or removed, we're going to set that to false so we don't really care about that anymore. Instead, what we care about is we, we care about when the attributes change. So we're going to set that to true. So now in our mutation callback, we can go through each of the mutations and we can check to see if the attribute has changed. So we can say mutation uh, attribute name, attribute name. If it equals the style, then that means the, the style attribute has changed and we should probably uh, handle this modal. So now each time our style attribute changes, we're going to recenter this modal. So I'm going to call a function I'm going to add here called uh, center modal every time this, the, attribute, the style attribute changes. So let's go ahead in here and add this center modal. And all it basically does is it checks the current width and height of, the, of this element and it parses it to get it into a, uh, a number without the, uh, the pixel you know, ending on it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set the style here. We're going to set the top and left to be the, the, the top left corner to be halfway on the screen. And then we're going to go back and up uh, about half the height and half the width of the element. And this way we can center the modal. So now when we ref refresh the page, our modal gets placed on the page and you can see that we get centered. Hmm, wait, but is that centered? Doesn't look, uh, looks a little off center to me. I think I got something wrong here. Uh, let's see. Oh, you know what? So this element itself has uh, padding and margin, and this is only taking into account the width and height. So we need to not check the width and height. Well, instead, what we need to do is we need to take the, uh, the offset width and then the offset height. And this will um, basically take the width, including the padding and the margin, um, to get us the correct uh, actual width and height. So let's set that. Refresh the page. Aha, yeah, that looks very much more centered and doing what it's supposed to do. So now you can see, no matter what dimension our modal um, size is to, it's going to respond and correctly center it on the page. So I hope this has helped you learn more about mutation observers. And if it has, then please share the video and help others learn about mutation observers. And if you want to see more videos, then uh, please subscribe. Thanks again for watching.